Hey guys, welcome back to Resurrect. My name is Daryl and I wanted to tell you a little bit about the tools I use in my home garage. Now the purpose of this channel is to show people how they can actually rebuild salvage cars in a regular two car garage. And if you have a two car garage like mine, a typical 20 by 30 with an eight foot ceiling, you're gonna run into some issues and that is space constraints. So you're gonna to have to get really creative on how you use the space. One thing that's really helped me is the Max Jacks two post car lift. Now, I tried a bunch of different options when I was first looking for a lift. Uh, obviously a regular jack and stands will do it, but it's gonna take you so much longer to get the job done. There's also the mid-rise lift that you've probably seen before. It almost looks like a scissors lift that goes in the middle of the car. The problem with these is you need to be able to get the engine out and transmission out very quickly when you're doing rebuilds. So something like this is going to be in the way from removing the drive shaft and the exhaust. So that really leaves you with a two post lift and obviously that is a big challenge in a small garage. A lot of options when it comes to two post lifts and many of the challenges are that they're just too tall. They don't fit in a space with an eight foot high ceiling. So I'm going to show you the max jacks and how it works. and. Um, just to let you know, I've been using this for five years. So this review has really been uh, tested. Um, I've really had a lot of time to work with this thing. I'll show you some of the upsides and some of the downsides. But overall, it's been a pretty good little jack. So let me show that to you now. So here's what the Max Jacks looks like set up. Now these two posts are installed right at about nine feet from post to post. One thing that really freaks people out about this setup is that there's no overhead structure and a lot of people think that an overhead structure is really gonna make the posts in some way safer but it really doesn't um, those two post structures uh, that you see in a commercial setting um, that that structure up top serves no purpose other than to uh, as a conduit for wires and hoses so i'm going to show you how i set this up now my floors are three inches thick, which is what I found out when I started drilling holes in them. And you really need four inches for this to work properly. So I had to cut, if you can see right there, I had to cut an area out of about 36 by 36. I used a regular saw, circular saw, and I put a concrete blade on it. And I cut holes in my, in my floor and uh, I dug a hole 12 inches deep, reinforced the floor with concrete rebar, and I used a concrete with the highest PSI possible. I believe at the time uh, I got 3,500 PSI concrete in the mix, and uh, they recommend 3,000. So I was trying to go a little bit higher, fiber reinforced. I wanted to make sure this was as strong as possible. So you got a 12 inch deep slab that's tied into the existing concrete. Now the cool thing about this setup is the wedget fastening system that is used with this particular lift, it allows you to bolt these posts down to the floor. And if you unbolt it, you can just wheel this thing out of the way. And that fastening system lies flush with the floor. So uh, it's not like you have like studs sticking up out of your floor. And this is what the wedget system looks like. I had some extras. And you can see right here, you just drill a hole out and this slides into the floor, into that hole. Then it's flush with the top of that. And then you just bolt out, bolt down the uh, post and there you go. And then when you want to remove it, you just unbolt it. This stays in the floor. You can roll this thing out of the way and then just have your garage back. So that's really cool. I have no need for that feature. So these have stayed where they're at for the last five years. But let me tell you, this thing has been very sturdy. I have never been scared of this thing falling on me. I always check the floor, make sure there's no weird cracks, nothing weird going on. Everything's bolted down properly every time I use it. But I really do trust this setup. Now here's a little installation tip that might help you if you're planning on getting something like this. When I was trying to install these uh, wedget fastening sleeves here, I could not get them to torque down properly. They kept spinning in the hole. 
And so I called a buddy of mine who is familiar with this kind of stuff. And basically what he told me was that I needed to wash out my holes. And um, that's exactly what I did. I just took a vacuum, cleaned out the dust, and then washed out those holes with water. And as soon as I did that, I put these back in and they worked perfectly. Uh, they, they were actually able to grab really well into the concrete and I got the full torque that I needed that the manual specified. So make sure that if you install these that you get that specified torque that's in the manual. Otherwise, do not use this lift. You need to make sure that those uh, fastening sleeves are installed properly. I've got a couple modifications that I made to this lift. Now, this lift originally came with these two posts. They both have wheels and they can be moved around and bolted down into place. And it came with this pump that's also on a, on a cart. And that cart is supposed to be installed right in the middle uh, with two equal distant hoses going to each post. Um, that setup works great if you plan on moving this thing out of the way every time. I don't particularly have a need to do that. So what I've done is I've just mounted this pump up onto one of the posts, much like you'd see in a commercial setup. The only other modification um, is originally this post only came with two holes, one here and one here. A third hole has been added. That modification is awesome because my ceilings are obviously not very tall. So when I raise the car up all the way, if I go to this setting, this is my locking mechanism. If I slide down to this setting, this is too low, okay? If I raise the car all the way up to the highest setting, now the car is in my attic. That's, that's not gonna be, that's not good, okay? So this is about as high as I can go and have the jack locked into place and me work under it as comfortably as possible. So that's why there's this extra, extra hole here. And if you buy one of these, I'm not gonna recommend that you drill holes in it, but I'll tell you for me, it was absolutely necessary to be able to work at the optimum height for my ceiling. Another thing about the Max Jacks, uh, the fluid that's in it is just regular Dextron ATF fluid. Um, it goes in this tank here, probably very similar to uh, commercial setups. And um, you can also use uh, a different type of mineral hydraulic fluid if you want to. Um, and then it's very simple to bleed. Um, I've actually only had to bleed this lift once, but uh, basically it's in the manual. I can't remember exactly how to do it, but I believe you have to lift it up all the way and then you just uh, release the air in here uh, by releasing the screw just a little bit and uh, you'll have a little bit of fluid come out and then you do that a few times, the thing is bled, good to go. Very simple, simple procedure. Also, one more thing about the Max Jacks is there's a couple different options when it comes to power supply. You have the option of 120 or 208. Um, I could have installed mine either way. It would have been very simple because my breaker panel is right here. Uh, I just chose to go 120. I don't really need to be throwing cars in the air like within two seconds. Um, it's plenty fast. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you about how fast it is at 120 volts. but. It's really a hundred times faster than jacking up your car and putting it up on stands. So if you really don't want to run 208 to 230, totally not necessary. Uh, you can just go with the 120. It, you're really not going to see a huge difference there. As far as any of the downsides of the Max Jacks, um, there's not many. I will just say for my purposes, I had to modify it just a little bit um, for what I'm trying to do with it. Uh, those modifications are my best setup that I could come up with. Um, the only, only other thing I can think of, it's only rated for 6,000 pounds. So if you plan on doing uh, three quarter ton trucks, stuff like that, it probably isn't gonna work. I have lifted a, uh, a regular half ton truck on it. Um, not a problem at all. I was at the upper limit of maybe 5,700 pounds. Um, so 6,000 pounds is, um, is totally doable. And really it's gonna be one of the best setups you can get for a small garage. So there you have it, guys. Um, that's my review of the Max Jacks. Um, it, it is well worth it. 
Um, now I bought mine secondhand, so I got a little bit better deal, but had I spent the full retail price on it, I could have easily paid for that uh, on my first project that I did rebuilding salvage cars. Um, so honestly, it is well worth the investment. It's paid for itself a hundredfold. So if you're thinking about getting something like this, uh, let me tell you, it's totally worth, worth it. Just make sure that it is installed properly. Um, and as long as it's installed properly, um, you're good to go. So I'll see you next time. Um, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, um, and uh, set up your notifications if you can. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching.